unwholesome. Uh, not, oh no. I was not unwholesome, and also the video is now starting. So again, uh new protagonist swap, maybe it's a first, maybe it's a second, maybe it's a third release at the end of the season. Who knows? Regardless, we are covering Dante in the world of MGR. At the time of recording, Jesus, it's like the Loki right show. Here. He's just plus, looped fifty times and he doesn't even know where he is. Plus and listen, I like to think it's just a multiple choice. Yeah, so um, protagonist swap, you know, that means character swapped in their positions, same stats, uh, not the same intelligence or arsenal or physiology. You get the point. <clears throat> We've done this a million times. Um, in the case of Dante from the reboot, since he's swapping with Raiden, Raiden at the beginning of the campaign is working with, uh, what is the name of his company that he's I, working with? I do not know, but he is currently contracting as a PMC for, I believe, an African senator in the first mission? The prime minister. He is, is with the prime minister. So, yeah. Yeah, so in R R zero zero, which is uh, called a guard duty, first mission... He is in a limousine, so we'll probably say that um, sometime before he actually gets in this limo, when they're sitting down before, um, I guess, he, the PMC contacts, maybe like 20, 30 minutes or so, right in just uh, going into the lobby to get a drink of water or something from one of the, you know, one of those little like office water containers. Takes a sip and then gets yeeted out of the Metal Gear universe. And then Dante appears in his place. And um, obviously everybody's confused when he shows up at the briefing. Dante has basically been told by the omniscient narrator that your goal is to essentially stomp the Desperados PMC company. And potentially uh, some other individuals that might, may or may not try to take up their, their mantle. Um... <laughs> and this explanation will be provided by said omniscient narrator under the guise of some other wealthy donor to the PMC in question, telling them that one of your major uh, enlisted contractors, Raiden, has, uh, has been displaced for a period of a couple weeks, but we will be getting him back to you on contract. In the meantime, we have set a suitable replacement, and he will be helping you on all these respective missions. Throughout this time, sounds about right. And uh, Boris right. and the rest of them are just going to uh, accept this because they don't have a choice in the matter. They can't. Get Although they're, they're being bribed, they're they're being bribed with a healthy bonus, so so they're, they're definitely they're not going bribed. to not accept. They're being bribed with a lot of money. Of course they are. The American way. Yes. I don't even think it's an American company. So yeah, he's Don Davis is just going to show up in his uh, casual outfit. Um, now he's going to look very uh. Outlandish, but yeah, he's he just told like you need to protect the prime minister. This is your goal, so use whatever means necessary to keep him alive. He's like, all right, sure, sounds about right. And he just tells him like in general, uh, probably take care to uh, watch out for any. Uh, I, I don't know, just like in and in, in the scene at this time. It's established that Raiden and the rest of... Uh, I was thinking of World Marshal. It's not World Marshal. It's... Um, the fuck is Raiden working with? Give me, give me a sec. Hang on. Let me see if I can't open up the Metal Gear Rising guidebook right next to me and see if no, I can't no. discern no, the give me, information. Give me a moment. I, I can find it. I Let's, can see find it. it. Let's see who finds it first. Maverick Security. Ha! Damn it. Okay. You All right, so Maverick, Maverick Security... Maverick has already been in the uh, the specific area uh, in the Africa. In, in well, I say the Africa because they, they aren't really in like a specific country. They're just with the African Prime Minister somewhere in Africa, and Raiden is basically discussing things with the Prime Minister, where he says that you've been here for like three years, and we've basically brought like peace and order to this country. We've stabilized it. So that kind of implies that Maverick's already been, had a working relationship with the Prime Minister and his administrative. So I, I think for today, it'll 
it'll just seem like a different transition. Like there's just a different guy working here. Uh, so yeah, it's not going to suspect anything different. And then uh, of course they get ambushed in the, the guard duty mission. And uh, Dante in standard outlandish fashion is going to get out of the car when they when their exit gets cut off. And I basically tell them to send the prime minister somewhere else so that he can carve these guys up like a pile of bacon. As you do. As yeah, you do. Um, and I'm just going to say uh, when, when guard duty starts, uh, he's pretty much just going to walk through most of these enemies. Because there is not really anything they can do against a weapon like Rebellion. Rebellion can basically clash with, like, every freaking material in Reboot, which includes anything from, like, Hellfire to, like, Ice and a bunch of other, like, well, energy projectiles, and then also, like, Yamato, which... The and cut one, through space itself. Yeah, I'll say the main one to focus on will be that it can clash with and not get sliced apart by a weapon like Yamato, which cuts through space and time, which is a slightly more effective cutting technique than what MGR swords are capable of. <laughs> <laughs> Only slightly. Yeah, so before anyone wonders, like, how is he going to cut through the enemies? Uh, I mean, you could cut them through them with a sufficiently strong enough blade. But uh, I'm pretty sure Rebellion is going to be able to cut through them. And even then, uh, he has attacks that can attack the soul, which is to say, like, most of his arsenal in general. He also has a better arsenal than Raiden because he actually has, like, projectiles and things that he could chuck at people. So, um, to, to clarify, Dante killing these guys is not the problem. The only major concern is how he would deal with the high-frequency blades and potentially machetes, because the machetes might be high-frequency as well, and he should be able to clash with those and be fine. Yeah, I, I think he's probably going to probably skip and run around a lot of these enemies. It's only when we get to Ray that he's actually going to have to fight somebody, because uh, technically manipulating people's souls is not going to work very effectively on a machine that has no soul. Uh, wasn't Blable's whole journey about how machines can still have souls, Mangler? I feel like it'd be very disappointing. Listen, he has, he's programmed with a high degree of intellect. He is different. He is literally built different. How dare you? Not, not the same. He has a soul, Mangler. He didn't spend the entire game having an existential crisis just so you could write him off. I mean, he has this thing called creativity, so clearly he has a soul. Of course. But, uh, in any events, uh, I don't think... I don't know if Ray's really gonna matter here much, because all of the crazy aerodynamics that Raiden can do to get around those blasts and stuff like that, Dante can do the same thing, plus he can not only canonically double jump, he can do his various air jumps he has the orpheum demon poles or whatever the demon poles and angel poles are he can do both of those and he can also fly around with like at least with the angel boost uh so it's he, he's gonna be able to do what he needs to do to get from location to location he'll be able to mimic anything that Raiden does in and all Raiden had to do to beat ray was just like slice through portions of his body or even just like disable, disable like the uh, really just disable his legs. That would have probably killed him, or taken him out of the speaking, fight. And yeah, I, there, I, there are plenty of ways to destroy the Metal Gear. It's just that uh, you know, Raiden did it in a more like flavorful way because I believe Raiden does use his sword yes. to cut his legs off. If I'm mistaken. Uh, he cuts off, I think, one of his arms. His, both of his legs are still intact by the end, and he's shooting missiles until until he just cuts in like straight down the middle. I think. Yes, I might be remembering it wrong, but yeah. And then after that, um, what is it? Where does he fucking go? Yeah, there, there was nothing Ray could do to stop Dante at this point. And again, even if you want to believe that Dante would be weaker than the MGR characters, uh, for the purposes of the protagonist swap, he would be on their level. So he would have no issues defeating Ray. 
He, he would have Raiden's strength, so yeah, he's not going to have an issue. Then after this, he just has to chase Sundowner. And Sam. Um, no, Sundowner. Because Sam is waiting. Remember, Sam is waiting at the tram car. You have to right. chase him to get onto the tram. But that only happens specifically because Sundowner uh, intercepts the limousine of the Prime Minister and takes out his security guards. Are we assuming but, that, uh, that happened in I, this case? I'm assuming that happened, but remember, there's a moment where he he uh, has a conversation with Raiden after he pulls the Prime Minister onto his back and then runs off. Oh, and you no. see Sundowner run in the distance. Um, what, what I'm just going to argue... I'm just going to argue that Dante's just going to shoot him. He's just going to fucking shoot him. <laughs> like he's, or he's just going to throw his grab out and just grab Sundowner. He's not going to let him get away. He's going to be like, yeah, no, I have a mission to protect the prime minister. You think I'm going to let you get away? Like, so so are, right are, you, <laughs> are you telling me that you think Sundowner doesn't even leave the area? He just immediately gets into a boss fight with Dante? <laughs> He's, he's going to get into a boss fight immediately because the main reason Raiden couldn't is because, one, Sundowner had a head start on him. Two, when he saw Sundowner, he couldn't do anything because his only weapon is a fucking sword. But if you gave him, like, a grab that could pull him to his enemy's position, yeah, he would have been on Sundowner's position, like, very quickly. Sundowner would not have been able to get. He would not have been able to get away. He would have had to drop the prime minister and fight Raiden. So in the context, so that's exactly of like, what's going to happen. And so then, I guess we're talking about Dante versus Raiden now. So or Dante or Don, versus no, Raiden. Dante, Dante versus, versus Sundowner. Sundowner. Forgive me. I <laughs> had a nice meal. So the thing is, so are we assuming the shield blocks rebellion and would knock Dante back, or because Dante can withstand Hellfire and the like? He probably would just power through and break the shield anyways. I mean, you could... I don't think Hellfire and Explosives are necessarily the same thing. It's just that any heat from the Explosive wouldn't do anything to him. It would only be the Kinetic Force. But that wouldn't matter after, like, one or two interactions. Plus, um, I don't know if you've seen Sundowner's boss fight, but his main audio clip is... I'm fucking invincible whenever he throws out the explosive shield and Dante's going to look at that and be like, oh, that's, that's an obvious trap. Even if he doesn't, he only has to hit it once and then he'll realize, oh, I should probably not hit where the red shots are. I should probably aim around that. Man, it's, it's really Let me just that throw that a cool shield up. has a telegraphed weak spot. It does, and you can even slide your sword in between that weak spot and pull it out from the sides, because it only activates in response to kinetic force. But if you just reach your hand out and grab the shield, it won't detonate the shield. So so are you are you telling me that all that happens here is that Sundowner puts his shield up after Dante's hit it once, Dante sees it, Angel dashes behind him and just stabs him in the back? Oh, you mean? Oh, no, no, that's not the. Uh, you're thinking of the uh, the angel of eight. Yeah, that's that's actually different than the angel dash because that's he's intangible, so he can go directly through your body and yes. come out the other side and attack you I, from behind. I, I, I meant the angel of eight. So what? He just angel evades behind Sundowner. Yeah. It's like just nothing personal. He kid. could. He could literally do that, or he could throw a quila to the sides, and you know the you know the um. It's like the, the stand poles that are holding the shield up on the sides yeah. that you can cut in Blade Moon. If you just throw a Quila at those and just cut them off at the sides, he could just shoot Kablooey at his feet and then detonate it and blow it up behind the shield. He could pull the shield off using the grip. He literally has like five different ways to get around the shield. And then he just kills Sundowner because once the shield yeah, yeah. Gone, Sundowner's only ability is the pincer swords. And that's not really I would like to much. point out that Dante has a really high degree of experience fighting shielded enemies. Most enemies of the reboot are just shielded enemies that will camp behind shields and will block and reprisal you. Adding an explosive charge to the shield doesn't make it more effective. It just... It, oh, or, or I guess I should say, it doesn't make it more like... It just makes it more dynamic. 
It doesn't uh, change the weakness of being a shield. How how do we take the shield versus shield breaking attacks? Because like Dante has Arbiter with the axe handle he can throw at you. Or with the axe head he just uh, blinks at you. I would just assume the axe handle would damage the shield and would trigger the explosive. But the thing is, is that Raiden has no projectile sword attacks. So once he realizes, oh, the sword detonates, let me just overdrive through the shield or throw an attack at the shield that triggers the explosive but still damages just the shield. And I'll just keep chucking them until the shield explodes. Until it's completely gone. So he yes. could literally brute force his way through it. He could also just fully charge Erdix and just smash through it in one go if he really wanted to. He doesn't... <laughs> He has so many different ways through it. It's like ridiculous. So Sundowner gets beaten, but before he dies, Sam steps in because he's wondering where the ron what happened to the rendezvous. Yeah, he's well. Sam was on the train, but we'll just say uh, Sam was nearby and was like, "Yeah, I, I got tired of waiting because uh, you guys were uh, taking a fuck ton of time." It's not so acceptable. It, he's just like, I'll take this death. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh honestly, I think Reboot Dante has probably more than enough tools to deal with Sam. Because while Sam probably could block his bullets from his pistol, I don't know if Sam is equipped to deal with Auto tracking, homing, Aquila buy-in attacks that just appear out of nowhere and just start like homing in on your position. Plus Osiris, plus Kablooey, plus like a bunch of things. Because Dante could just throw an Aquila at you, suit Kablooey midair, and then detonate it, or like shoot a dart at you and then detonate it. Um. And then just shoot, like, overdrive slashes. Because the overdrive slashes are just pure energy. He can just shoot them at you by yes. swinging a sword. He doesn't have to, like, directly fight you. So the entire fight, Sam is going to have to be dodging. He's going to have very little opportunity to engage. Oh. Okay, so according according to Zim, he muted his audio because his mom was talking in the background, so you're only gonna be hearing me. Um Do you have anything you'd like to say on, on the part of Zim, uh Sam Zim? Yeah, um, he basically says that Sam probably is a better fighter, which I, I do agree. There's probably better statements in, in this game and in the Metal Gear Solid lore overall that puts characters like him riding above Dante in terms of skill. However, they are not equipped to deal with the type of hit that Dante has. I mean, how do you deal with a guy that is basically throwing multiple tracking homing projectiles at you all at the same time? When he can also basically teleport behind you without actually teleporting and can just fly behind your body. Not to mention any of Dante's strikes should be able to separate your soul from your body. Or take your soul out of your body or just attack your soul. And that's not something that Sam is going to be able to deal with. Like, the, the win con, and not, not to mention um, Dante is a healing factor. He can heal from being stabbed pretty extensively, so Sam's win con is I need to stab you a few times and then I'll probably like take you out because I'd split you in half. But that only works on people if they don't have a healing factor. And that's not really effective against a guy that can just heal back the damage. And his win con is I hit you once, take out your soul. So... <laughs> Yeah, so before I continue that, can they 
still not hear you or Sure, because your mom has a habit of playing a ton of copyrighted music, and that's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> I get I'm free later tonight. I'm free. I'm free tonight. That's what I said. <laughs> 